Hey Flosstube, it's Lee from Creatively on Sunday 22nd of November with Flosstube number 51. Um, it's uh, been a really horrible raining day or morning and now the sun just suddenly came out so the neighbours are cranking up the old lawnmower so if you hear that be aware that's it's what happens at weekends in the burbs, right? So yeah, um, speaking of the weather, um, there was an article on the news over the last couple of nights. Apparently, um, we're on track to being the dullest November in record. Uh, we average something like 67 hours of sunshine in November in Wellington. And so far, with a week to go, we've had 21 hours or something like that. It's been really, <laughs> the, yeah, it really has been the dullest November. And we're on track, we're like this much away, 60 mils away from having the wettest November on record as well. So go Wellington, go, go spring. Um, the only good thing I hope that the dam's getting filled up so we don't have such a droughty summer. Who knows? Anyway, um, but yeah, suddenly now that I decide to sit down and do the video, uh, the sun's come out. Who knows? Um, what else has been happening? Now, I talked to Dad this morning. He's doing pretty good. Um, my one of my brother, my stepbrother Mark, is up from Christchurch with his partner Penny, and they're visiting for a few days and have been over to the home to see my stepmom a couple of times. Um, so Dad said he's enjoying having company in the house, although Penny's, Penny's a pescatarian and I guess my brother is by the fact that they live together. So, you know, you tend not to cook up great big booty steaks, right? When you're living with someone who doesn't eat red meat. So that's been interesting for Dad because he went and bought a whole lot of, he didn't know, so he went and bought a whole lot of meat. So <laughs> he's gonna have, Plenty of meat for the next little while. Um, went to a movie on Friday with my friend. We're trying to cram in a couple of movies for the end of the year. We had a there was a preview of Ammonite, which is a uh, slow, intense love story, I guess, between um, Kate Winslet's character and Saoirse Ronan's character set in the, oh, I'm trying to think, what are they wearing? Um, 1800s, I have no idea. Uh, and if you know Kate Winslet at all, pretty much you're guaranteed she gets her kid off, right? Yep, she got her kid off. It was very intense. Um, I think the audience was largely quite uncomfortable by the quite sort of, uh, I don't want to say graphic, that's the wrong word. I'm going to say intense love scenes. Um, there was some very nervous tittering in the audience, which is a little bit of a people grow up. But anyway, it was, um, if you like slow cinema, it, you, it's good. If you're into fast pace, it's not for you. <laughs> um, but the setting, a town called Lyme in the UK, on the coast, uh, let's just say bleak, looked cold and damp, and it made me feel better about our dull spring, because at least I'm not cold and damp in my house. <laughs> um, I can't think what else is going on. Just work's been really weird. I've had issues with my bloody temporary crown. Um, I get my permanent crown fitted. Uh, basically, I flossed when they said don't. Uh, two things. They said avoid flossing between the crown, temporary crown, and the new filling. Um, and if you do have to floss, because because I've had a old amalgam filling replaced with a composite filling a porcelain filling, whatever you call them, a white filling, um, the gap's bigger because they get fitted differently. So there's a gap between the temporary crown, which was made when I had the old filling in, and then I'll get the new crown, which the, this, the mold was taken after I had the filling done. So the gap will go, but at the moment it feels like I drain, drove a freaking train through there. Anyway, 
I said avoid flossing next to the temporary crown. However, because I've had this filling issue, it's trapped. So floss, but pull the floss through. This is way too, too much information. Pull the floss through, but I didn't. I pulled up and I made my crown loose. Anyway, let's just say this bloody tooth is expensive. Um, I've got another, I don't know, nine, eight hundred bucks in two weeks. <laughs> It'll be done. And then I probably, in theory, don't need anything done other than my normal, you know, Warren of Fitness um, annual visit, hygienist twice a year, that sort of thing, which is part of my plan that I pay for anyway. Anyway, let's just say this week has been too, too much. Um, yeah, this is, yeah, it's just crazy. Um, other than that, I'm just trying to be, live a very quiet life <laughs> while I pay for dentist bills. Ah. I'm supposed to have somebody come around today to do a quote to, for some of my hard landscaping. Um, he was meant to come yesterday, got held up. He said he'll let me know today, but I did tell him I'm working from home tomorrow, so potentially he might come tomorrow. I kind of prefer it to be tomorrow, to be fair, but we'll see. If he turns up, he turns up. I got dressed, so it's okay. Um, haul. Well, I have a tiny little haul. Um, I do expect next week I'll get my Rainbow Club from Country Stitch. Well, I mean, I know it's on its way. Um, this month I've got 32 count, and I've got an extra piece of... So the, the Rainbow is a surprise. And I got another 32 count of topor, which is the same colour as the little sample I got from the retreat. Um, I do have, I do have a project or two in mind, so I'm interested to see how that's gonna. It's quite a bold choice for me, so I'm quite looking forward to that. Um, my Victorian motto has moved. Now I know that they've had some, let's just say, some personal, family, challenges over the last little while. Um, so that, you know, that combined with the USPS just being ground to a halt, combined with COVID and no aeroplanes, it's been quite hard getting stuff here, right? But finally it's moved, I checked this morning, last seen, last checked in in St. Louis, uh, distribution centre on the 19th and as at the 21st it says it's in transit to its next facility which I don't know where that is but um, somewhere probably getting moving its way to some sort of port so that's very exciting so just a reminder that's four months worth of so, uh, four months worth of Victorian Motto um, Club floss and fabric, so four fat quarters and 24 skeins of cotton. Um, that's the um, June, July, August and September. I have have put my membership on hold until we get back on track. Hopefully, you know, give the new dude time to settle in in um, government, perhaps, and the election being, so the election being over should sort out some of the volume issues at the USPS. Also, a new dude being in, hopefully he has the opportunity to undo some of the things that were meddled with with the postal system in the States and everyone can get back to having some faith in it. We're still going to have the COVID issue, we're still going to have no freaking planes coming with mail on it, but at least it removes one of the roadblocks, right? So fingers crossed, things get sorted out there, but it's moved and I'm very happy. But I did get my, what month are we? Might be October, Silks For You, colour of the month? Silks of the month. I don't remember, I really should find out which one I'm in, right? It's not the special dye ones, it's the, like it's not the one-offs, it's the just four silks that coordinate. Wow, I must say, this, this um, last October, she's a bold, bold choice. Uh, not really my cup of tea. I'm not sure if, 
how I would use these, if I would use these. It may end up in a future giveaway. We'll see, but I'll hang on to it for a little while. But look at this. If you know me, you know this is not me. I, this color pink is the epitome of the wrong shade of pink. <laughs> um, it's a very cold citrony yellow and a very bluey green. These are not, but not a tealy green. These are, and yeah, of course they're variegated. So these are not my cup of tea. That's what you get when you do a mystery club. Um, I, they look fabulous together, but holy shit, that's really bright. So we'll see. Um, yeah, we'll just put it away for a while and see. I mean, somebody might want me to stitch them something. They go, oh, I want unicorn vomit. <laughs> And stitch for that but anyway um, if anyone cares <laughs> you love these colors and you'd love to get a hank of it um, this one is PR166 uh, the yellow is PR164 the green is PR165 and the multi is PR160 so uh, the 15 meters of silk but anyway, that was quite the... I was looking forward to it arriving, and then it opened and I went, oh my gosh, that's quite quite a bold choice. So we'll see. They're not... They're definitely... This is not my thing. <laughs> but it's fun getting it. Anyway. Um, so... The, what month are we? November will be on its way. I think that was shipping around the 16th or so. So that took a very long time to get here. That took probably the best part of, I don't know. Given you pay early in the month, yeah, I don't know. It took about five weeks to get here from Australia. Um, the last, the previous month took about, two weeks from when it was shipped so I don't know what the hell happened there either I don't know you just can't put your life on post you can't be that desperate with it um so I haven't bought anything apart from the fabric with country stitch because dentist bills but we'll see in the new year who knows uh la 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 stitching so I did do a little bit of stitching You can see by the title that it was more of the fruit um, samplers. So I carried on with the berry bowl sampler and you look at that and go, oh, it's finished. It's not quite finished. I ran out of Oscar, so I do have Oscar on its way to me. Um, so there's four, this one, this one, this one and this one all need Oscar to finish them. Otherwise, the bowls are done. Um, and then I have to do this personalization and the central cartouche. So I know in the chart, there were a couple of places where there were initials for of the two designers. So possibly I'll put my initials doesn't look too gappy though, does it? I think one of them was up here, down here. Oh, I've got the, the look, I've got the freaking chart in front of me. So um, you can see where the initials are there. Um, so maybe I'll put my initials in one place and, the, and move the year to another. Um, because this, and I'm going to change the motto in the cartouche. I don't know what to yet. I have to do a bit of thinking. But this one says, life is sweeter when shared with friends. And of course, I didn't share this. I mean, it doesn't make sense unless you know that it was stitched with somebody. And of course, I didn't stitch this with somebody. So I'm going to think about what I might put there. You know, kind of like life is like a bowl of cherries which is a really random thing, other than it's not a box of chocolates. Um, 
and it's one over one and I will do it one over one especially since there's a tiny little bird which is, is this little bird is one over one it's so cute and then there's a black bird somewhere that's one over one this one up here and it's just is that one one over one I'd lied that was not one over one just this one and it's so cute and tiny so yeah so it's nearly finished so once I get my Oscar I will complete the leaves it won't take me very long at all and then I have to think about what I'm going to stick in the middle of and to finish this off and then it will be done. So possibly finished the sweet coming. If I can decide what's going in the middle, I don't know. So that is uh, Berry, Berry Bowl Sampler by Heartstring Samplery and the Scarlet House, a collab. And I stitched mine not on two pieces like they did. So they used Wren and Heartland. I used 36 count antique sampler linen from Victorian Motto Sampler Shop and I did a partial conversion um, from Stash. I did buy a lot of the golds and greens. I already had Oscar, that's why I ran out because it was partial skein. Uh, and then I subbed, I subbed the, um, the pink, the pink and the blue are Victorian Motto. The, um, I think nutmeg I swapped for hazelnut. Uh, I swapped Tennessee red clay and red rocks. They got swapped for, anyway, I can't remember. Um, chrysanthemum and cayenne because I had those and they were close enough and mascara, a set of mascara which I've heard is just like a waste of time to buy anyway because it's just black but not as nice to stitch with is 310 I actually swapped for the Black Sea Valdani that I had left over from another project which is not my favourite to stitch with I don't think it's best stitched one strand it breaks really easily and my other project was one strand as well and it broke really easily so even though I cut my lengths really short and I was using a good needle it still broke so I love the colour though because it had a real blue tinge to it just gave it a little bit of interest I just don't love stitching it I will try it two strands on another project and see whether the extra strand just gives it a little bit more um, strength but whether I got a bad batch or whether it's just over dyed and the dye has just killed the, the strength of the cotton. I don't know what the base Valdani use. It doesn't feel like DMC. It's almost, it doesn't have a smoothness to it at all. There's no luster to it. It's quite sort of, feels like a very fine um, pearl when you run your hand along it. So I'm not sure what Valdani does, but I love the colour and I'll keep using the bit until it's gone because I don't waste shit so so yeah um that is I basically stopped because I ran out of Oscar so it would have been finished no I would have finished the berries if I had the Oscar I probably wouldn't have finished it finished it because I don't know what I'm writing in the middle and then I picked up yesterday last night had a very late night I picked up my pomegranate Quaker from Al Forest, which I'm stitching on 30, whoops, which I'm stitching on 32 count granite Belfast from Zweigart and using a whole lot of Victorian Motto Sampler Shop floss, mostly the Fabulous Red collection, which is a collection that Nancy put out last year, I think, or the year before. I don't remember anymore. No, it must have, doesn't, I think it was last year. I, um, and then a couple of other reds that I picked up from other floss of hers. It is beautiful to stitch with, it really, and especially two strands. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to twist, this, it stays plump. It's just so lovely. Yeah, I know she uses a DMC base. I don't know, I presume it's a DMC white, but it's just, Whatever, however she dyes it, it just makes it lovely and soft. So, 
it's actually really, really pleasurable to stitch with two strands on 32 count. Anyway, as you can see, I have a finish date. 22nd, I finished it just before I started this video. Well, I start, finished it about 11 o'clock and it is 11.51. I had to then iron it. So here it is. Here is my pomegranate Quaker. I stitched and stitched until my fingers bled. And I love it. Colours are a little bit different. Um, this mock-up's terrible anyway. Like, it's nothing like them. I mean, the mock-up, uh, it just looks so much better in person, right? Because this is not, this is a computer mock-up and the colours are weird and I printed this on my home printer, which is terrible. Um, so mine's brighter and I changed some of the colours around because I don't think they were matched very well. And then this one, I didn't have enough to, this was supposed to be the same. Anyway, I should have made, and, th and it's chartered that this and this are the same colour, so I changed it and that I was going to run out of, so then I stitched some of this one with this one and swapped the darker one in and then threw a few darker ones in for merit. And this one's a lot brighter, but I quite, I like it. And I have finished it and I personalised it. There's a little tiny space in this motif, so I just did little my initials in 2020 and I have finished it. So guess what? I've got another thing in the pile. Um, that top border was a little bit tedious, um, but that was okay. And actually, I can see on here there is quite a bit of variation in there, which is nice. So yeah, hot off the hot off the ironing table is my pomegranate Quaker, and this is what I do when I finish straight into the recycling. I basically, to keep my life ordered, I de-kit stuff immediately. So when I finish this video, while it is processing, I will go and tidy up my floss. Um, I always keep little short bits while I'm on a project, but I usually, if it's shorter than this, if it's shorter than eight inch, like a single strand, I'll just bin the single strand. If I've pulled off, I've got like the full length and I've got four or five or three, whatever those strands are, if they're full length, I'll keep them. But if it's just a short bit, I'll just throw that away because it just gets really messy. But I'll go and tidy up my floss and I'll put them back on the floss strings. I've already recycled the rest of the chart. I just kept the um, paper to show you. And then I've got an empty bag. Um... And I think I've got two empty bags. Yeah, I've got two empty bags. Probably three in that I've got materials for the red and the black sampler, the red and the black two, which I don't have the chart yet, but I've got the bits and pieces in the bag ready. So technically that should be in my kitting basket or my kitted basket, but I just kept in the same bag um, that I had the other one in. So, you know. I don't have the chart for that yet, so. But that is pretty much my stitching for the week. So I'm very pleased with it. I'm really, I will, I think I will push to finish the Berry Bowl sampler this week, just to get another one done. I have, you know, a few, some plans to start. Um, I think I'm gonna start Save the Stitches, which I've had kitted up for ages now. I think I'm gonna start that in January, maybe a January 1st or thereabouts start. Cause, and um, I can't remember how many parts that has. I might work out how many to get done every month. I'm very keen to do the Modern Folk Embroidery sale for 2021. Um, the two colour version, I, I love. So Jacob has charted, he charted it for the two colours, basically a light and dark in the same colour. And then he did it, he's done a chart version that is just for mono because it has to be a little bit different because some of the stuff, you know, you need the contrast. I love how the, I love how it looks. The mock-up looks amazing. So the one he did this year didn't really thrill, didn't really do it for me. I think it was too similar to one I was already working on, I guess. But I like 
this one's not a yeah I just really like it so I'm quite keen to do that so thank you I can't remember who put me onto that now someone commented last week had I seen it and I was like no and then I was like I think I even messaged them back and went okay I'm totally in um, so there'll be hopefully when my fabric from Victoria Motto arrives there'll be a piece there that will just go this is me and then I can find a couple of flosses that will look really nice on it I'd like something that can be in my house therefore it has to ideally it'll probably edge towards like that color and something else um, I don't know we'll see I have a look at some stitch palettes for some ideas so keen to get that started um, the thing I find really frustrating with sales that are released periodic sales is that I don't when I get when I get into the mood I don't want to stop I want to stop when I'm ready to stop and I get really frustrated when you're waiting for stuff to be stitched across the page or especially if you're using a variegated thread and you want I don't know I just find it frustrating to have to wait so probably what I would do is let I probably won't start it immediately. I'll just buy it and then have it kitted up ready and maybe, perhaps I'll start it later in the year and then let, um, so I don't get, oh, the other thing that's really frustrating, yeah, and the main thing that's frustrating for me for a sale is that I like to stitch from the bottom left corner up on my pieces and the sales periodic charts is that, what, is that what they are? Serial charts. Charts that are released in pieces, they don't ever start in the bottom left hand corner. So that means then I have to stitch it upside down for me to be truly comfortable, which is fine. It's just not as much fun stitching it upside down. So <laughs> um, I stitched the pilgrim upside down just because I wanted to start with the houses in the top. So I stitched the whole thing upside down. Doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, that's probably the most annoying thing. And I think, so, and the worst thing is when the bloody thing starts, they get you to start in the middle. Because I hate starting in the freaking middle. Uh, so, I, like the peacock, um, the peacock garden, peacock in a garden, the linen and threads sale from 2019 was you know released the middle one and then it was at the top and it's like completely went opposite to how I like to stitch but once I got the border in I then could stitch each bit as it came through from the bottom up but it was still like really annoying so that's just like that's it anyway I probably will wait until more be yeah, quite a bit of the charts released before I actually start it or I'll change my mind and just start it because that's I pretty much like to do the opposite of what I say I'm going to do. I don't like anyone telling me what to do, even myself. Okay, I'm really that coffee. It was the last of the plunger grind that I'm glad I've got rid of because I think it might be a little bit old. Um, and then at some stage, and I really need to get, yeah, I don't know. I have a couple of other little projects that I want to start, which are, have big solid blocks of like, they're full coverage, but not full coverage, as in the main image is like solid. So that's lots of stitching. So all that to say that I really am quite keen on getting, if I get berries finished, um, I'll be able to get uh, the, um, monthly black work sale, a year of black work sale, you know, finished pretty soon after the last, pretty much whenever the last block drops, I'll be able to get that finished. Um, I haven't decided if I'm doing a border on it yet, so if I do, then that border will probably be done in January, but yeah, I haven't decided yet on that. Uh, what else am I going to get finished between now and... I really want to finish um, my seasons, Qua my Quaker Seasons of Friendship in January by my birthday. So 
after I get berries done, I think I'll need to pick that up and give that a little bit of a bit of love. Because when I do pick it up, I get quite a bit done. I just haven't picked it up. I just haven't been in the mood for 40 count. She says as she stitches on a piece of 55 count. But that's different. <laughs> that's just for fun. <laughs> it's just an experiment. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I'm not planning any particular thing for next year. I'm... I, I don't, again, don't like being told what to do. I want to do what I want to do, what I can do. I don't enjoy stitching challenges and stuff like that because I just feel it puts too much pressure and I, I just rebel against anything where I have to do this thing. The um, thing is, I, I don't need motivation to stitch. I don't need motivation to keep working on a repetitive thing. I don't need motivate. Like, I enjoy it. So... And I, and I find it relaxing and easy, so I don't need anything to motivate me to to do that. All I need is um, more time and more money. Those are the two things that are not going to be got through a challenge. And by more money, I, if I didn't have to work as much, then I would have more time and I could buy lovely fabrics and stuff. That's all. Okay, um, yep, yeah, I've got nothing, oh yeah, one more thing, um, just a reminder, uh, if you're interested, I did an announcement last week for my, for a giveaway, um, which is going to be a voucher, 20 US or 25-ish New Zealand dollars, depending on where you want the voucher to be, or a gift card to be, at a store of your choosing, uh, that giveaway, see last week's video, video number 50, or floss tube number 50, for more information on that. Um, that tells you what you need to do to win, or be in the draw to win. Um, yeah, and that's in recognition of my 50th floss tube, my one year anniversary on floss tube, and my two, and 200 plus subscribers. Um, quite a few comments coming through. I will admit to having a senior moment last week when I was like, why am I getting so, wow, I'm getting so many comments this week and they're all talking about why they love my videos, <laughs> which if you go and watch why, what the, um, what you need to do to be in the draw, uh, makes sense, eh? So you get what you ask for, Lee. So I'm a little bit behind, I've got a few to respond to. I do try and respond to all my videos, uh, all my comments. Um, I just have a few extra this for this week. So I'm keeping that drawer open until probably next week. I think I had said through end of the month. And um, then I will make a drawing. So yeah. Enjoy stitching. Be safe. Uh, and until next time, don't let your needles rust. And Karen... My friend Karen visited me yesterday with some of her projects in work and whips her works in pro progress and a finish that I ironed for her <laughs> and in one of her whips that she had pulled out of the old I put this down years ago pile there was a needle. Luckily it was in the very edge of the fabric and her needle was well and truly rusted into her fabric and that is why don't let your needles rust. Okay, ciao.